Hey guys, All in Crypto here, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. This is going to be your daily cryptocurrency market update. Apologies for uh, no video yesterday. We did put two out on the Wednesday. We did a daily market update, and then we also looked specifically at what was taking place in the UK with the bond market and subsequently the actions that the Bank of England were then going to have to take to uh, essentially prop it up. Um, and this all factors into really the FX markets. We know that Bitcoin's story is largely correlated with the DXY. Um, so we will be touching on that. But I really just want to start things off by looking at yesterday's price action for the stock market, the UK market. It was a brutal day, ladies and gentlemen, in the stock market. And in actual fact, Bitcoin and crypto held up rather valiantly. They held up really well in fact certainly bitcoin held up very well given what was taking the place we had the likes of apple down 4.6 percent yesterday we can take a look at the close that we got we had the nasdaq down 2.8 percent and the s p down 2.1 percent bitcoin didn't sell off in proportion with that and you've got to ask the question why so you guys know that we're looking at a potential head and shoulder. We are looking at maybe more of a pronounced double peaked right shoulder in the same way that we had a double peaked left shoulder. It is my opinion that we are going to see lower prices across the board, not just for crypto, for gold, certainly the paper price for the stock market, for the UK stock market. Everything is going to get hit in this recessionary environment that we are entering where people are going to need cash, including corporations, in order to um, essentially stay afloat, make payments, make bill payments, you know, pay off interest, blah, 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 blah. And this means that they are going to sell, in my opinion, and I think things are going to really heat up over the winter, certainly as things get colder, um, the assets that they have in order to, 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 to do so. Certainly retail, you know, are going to, in my opinion, still sell their crypto, um, because they're going to need the cash. And people say, oh, well, no, surely everyone's sold now. Go and ask your barber if he sold his Dogecoin um, or, or whatever it is that he holds or, or she holds. Um, it's my opinion that a large part of retail still hasn't sold their crypto and that the bottom is not in for Bitcoin. That being said, we are going to be giving you a short-term bullish outlook. And by short-term, I mean a week, maybe two weeks really depends on the dollar and it resting we have said and we've looked at the dollar in great detail um, and we've essentially said and by the way we were calling it under 100 a run to 108 we got to 108 we saw a pullback and then we continued to excel through it so when i'm giving a bullish case right now so today gold is up the future market is up the dollar is rather weak however we are getting some serious news from the Eurozone. The Netherlands, for example, had very high CPI. The Eurozone inflation has now soared to a record high of 10% for September. This is all, um, you know, pro probably going to, you know, help the dollar out. But the dollar's had an amazing run. And we did say coming into this grey box, expect a pullback at some point. Didn't have to be here, could have been slightly higher. But you are running into 2001 levels. Now, if we get that pullback, and we all know the correlation with Bitcoin and, and, and the Dixie for the dollar, does that mean that we get relief for Bitcoin? And going back to my opening point um, that I made at the start of this video, in actual fact, Bitcoin's been holding up very well. It's not the first time that it's done this against the stock market. The stock market's been getting hit hard. And Bitcoin, typically, which sells off in a higher beta and more volatile manner, has been clinging on very, very well. Now, why is this? You know, this is the real question. Are we just stalling for that next leg lower? I do think that next leg lowers and ultimately we are stalling. But does that mean that we have a move to the upside before we get that downward um, price action? And there's a number of things that I'm looking at. We've never ruled out the possibility of this being a double bottom. But when I say this could be a double bottom, I think that people will bid this and they'll take that bet certainly traders, but this isn't a double bottom that ends a bull market, in my opinion, if it is the case. So what we're really looking at, um, and what I'm going to do actually, and, and you know, you guys know that we like our indicators, we really like and we'll sort of, we only really want to focus on the RSI here. You have had 
somewhat of a bullish divergence for Bitcoin here. So you can see, and actually what we'll do is we'll just take this low here and this one here. So even though we put in a new low on Bitcoin, we didn't put in a new low on the RSI. So you can see there's a bullish divergence taking place here. Does that mean that we get a slight run to the upside? Does that mean that we then come and fulfill that double peak idea that we have for the right shoulder? Remember, this head and shoulders may not play out whatsoever. If you come and run this head, you get above 25K. It's likely that or oh, your head and shoulders is invalidated. It's no longer a head and shoulders pattern. However, given the fact that we've really held this level and we have held it very valiantly, this neckline, it does look likely that we are going to get some sort of a push. Certainly if the dollar takes a break, certainly if the stock market has had its kind of, you know, the, the, the worst is behind it um, in terms of on the short term. We're seeing the FTSE rally today. We're seeing gold up. We're seeing the dollar do well, but that's really on the back end of the Eurozone news and also the news within the Netherlands. Um, so it's a very hard market, certainly from a trading point of view. This market is a nightmare to trade because you're literally treading on eggshells from central bank schizophrenic um, action, you know, and it's not schizophrenic is probably not the right word, but it's very hard to uh, trade a market that is so moved from external factors. And those external factors are, you know, going haywire. We saw literally the pound see a huge capitulation on the back end of what they're saying is Liz Trust's mini bill. It wasn't that. It's all to do with sort of um, global banking and how that's working and how we're seeing a real flight to the dollar being the sort of safer currency and people not wanting pounds, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, uh, or euros because it's getting hit and we're seeing a higher level inflation in those sort of nations. And we're seeing a lower level, but still an acceptable level, unacceptable level in in, in um, the US. However, they've got higher interest rates, meaning that people are going to, you know, go to the currency that's got more behind it, essentially, and it's, it, it has less damage taking place. There are markets to make loads of money, like the bull market that we went from from March 2020, which was all driven by liquidity. And this is why we still maintain a bearish bias. Remember, markets are just a liquidity game, ladies and gentlemen. You saw a huge increase in the money supply. What did markets do? They followed along very nicely. We're now seeing a dip and we're actually seeing the adverse of March 2020 take place, which leads me to believe, and this is set to continue, and we are going to talk about this. We do have a number of tweets um, talking about market liquidity is very, very weak. Um, consider 2008. You know, this is a 2008 comparison. We have said that we believe your stock market goes into a 2008 style um, recession and crypto is likely to follow. I do not think that we've seen, even though we have seen crypto hold up very well, certainly yesterday in regards to the stock market, a decoupling. I think that may come on later down the line. And one thing that I find it very interesting is somebody that's been in this space for, for, for a long time now, um, or certainly for me a long time, um, is when we see these currencies failing, this should be Bitcoin's green light. You know, Bitcoin was created in 2008, really around the wake of the financial crisis. In fact, in one of Satoshi's um, or in one of the blocks, the first blocks that was ever minted for Bitcoin, Satoshi actually embedded a article. I can't remember if it was from the Times or, or what paper it was from, the Telegraph maybe, talking about the second lot of bailouts and the second proliferation of the money supply and, and the whole kind of vision for Bitcoin was that, it was here as a substitute, a sound money in opposition with these sort of, um, you know, fear manipulated control systems that impoverish the masses and, and, and so on and so forth. So Bitcoin, this, this should have really been Bitcoin's time to shine. But what we've actually found is that Bitcoin just moves perfectly in sync with the stock market um, and, and really with the tech sector. You know, this is a stock market in orange overlaid. Uh, and of course, you can see Bitcoin here. We'll change it to a line chart very, very quickly. So it's actually acted more as a kind of speculative risk asset than anything. It's not acted as a sort of lifeboat to failing currencies. Does that potentially become the case further on down the line? We will see. We're not seeing it yet. So we treat it as um, it shows us. You know, you don't call a, a, a dog a cat, basically. Uh, and, and, it's, and whilst it's moving in tandem, 
or moving in sync with the stock market, we treat it as such. So it's going to be a very, very interesting day. We are getting some negative news out of Europe. This is going to bolster the dollar, thus bring the cryptocurrency market um, potentially slightly down. But if I had a bias for today, it would be a long one. Uh, the fact that we didn't sell off yesterday, in my opinion, is very, very impressive. You can see all this chop here. One thing that I want to note, and when I say that we're, we maybe can see a little bit of strength in the short term, long term we still do, or midterm I should say, so I think we're only going to sort of maybe, if at all we hold here, hold this area for a for a shorter period of time. Does that mean, again, that we put in that um, second peak of the right shoulder? We've drawn this for a while and we, and we see a sort of push up to maybe 21, 22, 23K, potentially, but it doesn't have to do that. And I actually probably, in terms of a swing trade, wouldn't take the long, maybe a day trade, I'll look for a long. Um, but in terms of swing trading, it's just too risky because there is always that dollar wrecking ball that now that it's kind of swung out and maybe taken a bit of a break, can come straight back in and sort of ruin the uh, the cryptocurrency markets part. You're seeing it's getting a bit of a bid today on the back end of negative euro news. Um, it is actually gaining a bit of strength after a pullback in, re in relation to the euro. We know that it's actually pulled back significantly um, from the pound. It saw huge ga gain uh, or huge ground gain against the pound as we saw the gilt market, certainly the 10 uh, year gilts for the UK get absolutely smashed. Um, and they're blaming this on Liz Trust's e um, not e mini, sorry, mini budget. It's not that. It's more that people are flying out of the pound into the dollar. And we actually saw a huge spike of um, pounds enter the cryptocurrency market. And that's why we got this sort of rally here that got very quickly shot down. A perfect example of why you don't really want to be longing the cryptocurrency market right now in this kind of an environment. And this is an environment that I think gets significantly worse and we're going to get into that. So even though we've given maybe a short term bullish case for a little bit of upside, we do think that eventually the eventuality that you come and visit 15K is, is very, very likely in my opinion. Um, you know, I really do think that that's on the cards. We're still not investors in this market whatsoever. We're not investors in the stock market. You know, we're all in crypto. It's the only real market that we invest in. But for now, our thesis remains the same. We do, we, we've been in stable coins, dollar stable coins. Uh, and my Patreons have been for a while, for a long period of time, um, simply because we understand what's going on. And there's far greater forces at work driving the cryptocurrency market than the cryptocurrency market's fundamentals. And we've seen on-chain on -chain data really fall very short in terms of trying to predict whether we should be bullish or bearish um, thus far, given the fact that we are in you can't compare things that Bitcoin has done historically to today simply because we've never historically had to go through this kind of an environment. Um, and we can, we've shown you this a million and one times. You know, we've looked at the stock market from 2008 onwards, Bitcoin's creation onwards, and it's essentially just gone up because the Fed has had your back. They no longer have your back and they are willing to let you fall over and crack your head off the concrete. I also want to remark that this price action in terms of volatility, if you look, this is where we are today, looks very, very similar to this. And actually looks extremely similar to this. And if we were to see, we're calling for sub 15K, by the way. So a 15K is bang on 15K actually takes you to around about 23% down. We're calling for sub, which may, we're looking at maybe a 25% move down on the next leg lower. And the fact that you're consolidating for this amount of time, the longer the consolidation, the steeper the break. So this actually took um, 103 days to play out. I remember trading this and it was an absolute frigging nightmare. This is also in a similar 103 days. Yeah, this one took a lot less time. I think this one took about a month, potentially. Yep. So the longer the consolidation, the bigger the move. Now, it could break up maybe, and maybe this is a double bottom and we do see a huge move to the upside. I just don't think that's very likely, and I certainly wouldn't bet on it. I think more than likely, given everything going on at the moment, we see that next um, leg lower. But does the dollar see a pullback before that actually takes place, given where it currently is? That's the real question. So we can see uh, definitely an argument for, for longing today. 
Um, however, it is you want to make sure those stops are very tightly placed because you, you're betting against a, a huge downtrend, even though potentially we do have a bullish divergence on the RSI. Um, it is certainly we don't want to be looking at the four hourly RSI. I like to four hourly, maybe I'll go to if I'm day trading, um, but more, more, more times than not, you know, we'll stick to you know, you do have even though you're putting in new lows. Your RSI is actually showing you a bullish divergence here. Remember, this was a huge bearish divergence. This was a massive bearish divergence. You put in a new high with the RSI trending lower. You are putting in um, higher lows with the price actually putting in lower lows. So is there a slight divergence here? We've got this key point on the demand index. We will release a video on the demand index. You cross this. Demand index typically, typically can give good buy and sell signals on a swing trade basis. Um, but the problem that you've got with a lot of things right now is is just, you know, look at the dollar ripping today, or not ripping today, gaining strength on the back of some of the sort of economic data that we have. And this is why it's a very hard market to trade because it's so data sensitive that all your kind of biases, even if there's a perfect setup there, you can have, it, you know, news coming out for your, from Europe that just crushes the crypto market because it gives strength to the dollar and the FX market really is moving everything right now. It's the largest market in the world or certainly the most volume driven market, the largest market in the world is the bond and treasury market. Uh, and we're seeing real issues with that, which leads me to believe that there is a real nightmare at hand. So let's get into a little bit of the news. We're also going to talk about the fact that we've seen monthly net flows of Bitcoin onto exchanges back in the positive. Um, so 78k Bitcoin have has flowed onto exchanges over the last 30 days. Why is this? Number of reasons why this could be taking place. It could just be exchanges moving things around over the counter deal, so on and so forth. And um, but we will address this. We still do think um, that things are going to get worse. But what we've seen is we've seen central banks around the world actually come out and say that they're going to provide relief. Here is an example of Germany agrees 200 billion euro package to shield against surging energy prices. So they always say the cure for higher prices is higher prices. And what they mean by that is, you know, what are they, what are people going to do? They're, they're clearly failing across the board. And this is why I think we enter a stagflationary environment. Definition of stagflation is where you have high inflation and a stagnating economy in terms of growth and actually, um, you know, demand destruction, essentially. But what you're seeing is you're seeing central banks, um, and governments come together and go, okay, well, we're going to provide relief. We're going to print more money and actually, you know, do almost more QE, even though they're all supposed to be giving QT to fight inflation, which was caused by QE in the first place. Insane world that we actually live in, guys. You know, Germany here is agreeing a 200 billion um, euro package. In the UK, I'm not quite sure. I can't quite remember what it was, 20 billion or so um, package in, in, in forms of, in, in terms of relief um they're also talking about a number of things taking place um this is from the softbank plans at least a 30 percent staff cut uh, cut to vision fund source confirms we're seeing this across the across the board spoke about the bitcoin net flow so this is interesting maybe this is something to pay attention to why is that happening this is the German food price inflation year on year. This is just insanity what's taking place. And this is why I think stagflation is upon us. Inflation is still very high and quantitative tightening. Germany really have no say because of the EU and the fact that they're in the Eurozone. I happen to believe, and this isn't, you know, from in, you know, this isn't a hate on anybody in Europe um, or, or a diss or anything of the sorts. I happen to think the European Union is a failed experiment. I do not believe that you can tarnish everybody with one brush, certainly when they all have specific geographic and economic needs, these individual countries within the Eurozone. And we're seeing the likes of Italy break free, um, or, or break free is not the right word, rebel against this. And I think we're going to see many more countries within the Eurozone do a similar thing. We saw Britain with Brexit so on and so forth and i still think that you know you've got to address all of this in your investment thesis because it is a very negative time that we are moving into in my opinion this is market liquidity is very low considering 2008 so you've got 2020s market liquidity and you've got 2008 market liquidity you know again what, what are we looking at with liquidity we're looking at money we're looking at the flow of it we're looking at the supply we're looking at is it increasing decreasing and this is the game of investing you want to be on the right side of liquidity 
not the wrong side. Um, and we do think, in fact, let's just do it, guys. We've done it a million and one times for you. You know, this is market since 2008 when Bitcoin was created. They've just gone up. We've never had to enter a recessionary period. I think this looks very similar to this and actually looks like we're heading into this. You know, this is, I, I still think we have yet to have the crash and the yield curve inversion would very much predict this. We've not had, in my opinion, the fallout of this. And you'll go, oh, well, crypto's down 70% or the stock market's down 20 whatever percent. We'll take a little look at you whilst we've got the NASDAQ up. It's not a crash, guys. 34%. It is a crash, but it's not the kind of crash, the economic fallout that I think we are yet to enjoy. And that makes me want to be on the side of caution from an investment point. If you does the risk outweigh the reward, we have people calling for bottoms here um, that really are just hoping and praying. There's no, nothing else really behind it. If the Fed and governments around the world, and maybe we're seeing the start of that with these relief packages, um, decide that they want to stimulate the economy again and, and go, okay, well, clearly quantitative tightening isn't killing off inflation. We're going to just have to go back and provide QE and stimulus again, or an event takes place that caused that to happen. We flip bullish again. But for now, we still think there's lower prices to be had. Even if we think potentially there's there, there's a good chance that we do get a move to the upside in the short term, we're talking a matter of could be this week rolling into next, could be the next week continuing, it could be two weeks time before we get that final slam down. And we've been consolidating for a while now. You are going to get a decisive break in either direction. We are seeing some altcoins absolutely die in terms of volatility, which is sad to see from a trading point of view because I want that volatility. I want there to be um, people trading and 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 you know, liquidity in these markets so that we can trade it. We don't want this kind of, you know, in 2008, 2019, really stag nation period where nothing is really um, moving. Um, so we've looked at the price, we've looked at this, uh, and we've also spoke about cross-border capital is great to follow. We really looks at liquidity and that's what they're all about. And they talk about quantitative tightening, quantitative easing. Here we go again. Today's print, the Fed liquidity QT gaining momentum on the downside. Keep away from risk assets. Something will break. It is going to break. It's my. This is a thing. I don't think we've had that break yet. You know, and I, I can't help but feel like maybe that break occurs on the back of hope. So maybe something happens and we get a, a real rally and then it breaks. Kind of like what we had in March, going into March 2020. There's potential. Um, but I do think something is is very much set to break, um, in my opinion. This is another one. This isn't just the Australian housing market. This is the housing market across the across the board. Australia's house prices fall, interest rates soar, but analysts say there's no crash yet. So the crash is still, again, in my opinion, likely to happen. I think this is going to affect property. I think this is going to affect everything. When I say that crypto is going to go down, it's not just because I think crypto is garbage. You know, you guys know I'm a long term believer and really do believe that the cryptocurrency market is a technological revolution. However, I think gold's going down. I think housing is going down. I think anything other than money is going to get hit. Not anything. There are going to be certain pariahs, but generally people are going to fly to make their payments. They're going to fly to, you know, liquidity. They're going to fly to safety. And that isn't in an asset that's going down. We did see a huge, like I say, spike in um, volume from GBP into Bitcoin. But the problem with that is if Bitcoin continues to go lower, you're almost worse off. We've been in the do dollar for a very long time now, or not a very long time, you know, six months or so, really since Bitcoin was 44K, uh, and we continue to do so, even though we expect a pullback to take place, because I think the dollar is going to be the last man standing um, in terms of and we did a great video with Francis Hunt. For anybody that's not watched it, it's well worth a watch where we talk about the dollar poison pill and the debt poison pill that has been essentially given to certainly all your emerging nations, which is why we've seen them completely um, implode in terms of their currencies. Um, but actually, you know, Europe isn't going to escape that or, 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 or the pound. Um, so that's really all I've got for you guys. It was just a bit of a longer video. You know, there, there definitely is a case to be made that we do come up here. The fact that we didn't sell off alone is, I think, bullish in the short term when, when the stock market was doing what it was doing. That largely depends on the dollar. We've got some pretty bad news out of Europe, but we haven't seen the dollar spike on it. We've seen the dollar get a little bit of strength. You know, this is the news from Europe.
not done a great deal um at all and it could definitely roll from here but we will see but this is the this is the issue that we've got as crypto traders right now we're, we're not just crypto traders we're fx traders we're, we're s p traders you know we, we, we have to venture into uncharted waters because it's uncharted times and like i say again markets have only really gone up since 2008 we're not in that situation now guys and we have to be um, very vigilant and and aware of that so that's really all I've got for you in this one, guys. If you've enjoyed the content, a like is always appreciated. So as a comment, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next YouTube video. Have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.